Okay. So I'm going to have you introduce yourself. Okay, but before now, you... this is a class yes. of what? It is my class. It's, uh, it's called uh, From Beginning Photographer to Exhibiting Artist. This is their third session of a 12-week class. Where? At NYU. In session number 11... I want to they... say Mazel Tov to all of you. Yes, go okay. ahead. In session number 11, approximately 9 or 10 weeks from now, yes. they are going to have their own show in the gallery here. Here? Yes. In this gallery? And chances... And you're invited. Now what I... month is that? In December. Okay, oh great. And uh, chances are, if their show is like the 20 before it, we will fill the gallery out. At, so you are the guest exhibitor this I month am. at the gallery. That's right. Introduce yourself, okay. please. My name is Tequila Minsky. I'm the guest exhibitor at Soho Photo in the month of October. October 5th through the 29th is the show. Okay. okay. And tell us about this work. Obviously, we now know it's about Haiti. This is about Haiti. Um, I, uh, this, this work is um, sponsored in part by the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council. So I received a small grant to, get, to do this work. And uh, I knew that if I got the grant, that this is how I wanted to present it on, in this manner. So um, uh, I got the grant, and uh, Soho Photo gave me this date as a, as a date to exhibit, and um, and that's the, the short end of this. And then I can give you the story. I, I, I am a photographer and a writer. I have uh, written a number of different things about Haiti, write about Haiti, and I photograph, and I have been going to Haiti since 1993. I was in Haiti, in January of 2010 to do some work with a peasant cooperative in the center of Haiti. And there are a couple of photographs in the other room over there that we'll go to, and that's what I was doing Why I was in Haiti in January. And I had returned from, from uh, the center of the country to Port-au-Prince uh, on January 12th, and three hours later there was an earthquake. Okay? And so I... Uh, I had a camera, I was in a hotel that survived, and I just photographed until it started to get dark, and my photographs were some of the first photographs that were out, and they were on the cover of the New York Times. They were on the New York Times blog three hours after the earthquake, and some of the photos, for example, this one, was sold by the New York Times, and it was sold uh, many times all over the world. So this is probably the most popular photograph it's not my most, uh, this is not the photo that I like the best, but this was the one that actually sold. Was on, I think it was on the cover of Le Figaro and a few other places also. So, for you. so this, um, these three, the way, the, the way I've organized this exhibit is that the, photo, the photos that are on the same piece of clothesline are all connected to each other thematically. So these three, and there, there is a sheet of paper that explains it also. These three were, th were within the first hour of the earthquake. This picture was 11 minutes after the earthquake. Just a question. Um, what made you choose to use fabric? Well, uh, uh, this is kind of like an ass backward kind of thing. But Levi had a photo workshop in Soho in, in November. And I experimented with printing there at that workshop on, on, uh, on, on bleach muslin. And um, not sepia toning it, but just, and then I thought if I ever got that grant, this is how I want to present the work because if we move along, you'll understand. Let's move along, you'll understand. So these pictures, and see, this is all a metaphor about Haiti, because you put the thing here and it all falls down. <laughs> and this is kind of like what it's like having no control over your life. And, it, and I mean, it's pathetic. Here, I'm talking about some stupid blue dots on a wall. Imagine, this is the day after the earthquake. These three were the day after. This was like a half a block away from the hotel where I, thankfully I was at one hotel that survived, no damage. 
this is a very sad story. These girls, these are girls, 131 nurses. Were in a, they were at school in a building. This is the building. And they all perished. They were at school. 20-year-old girls. And this, uh, so this is all the day after. So we're talking about January 13th. Um, okay, so you asked me why, why did I choose this? Because you have over a half a million people living in tents right now. And so it's a perfect medium to put this on this kind of flimsy fabric because, and I'm being very conservative when I said a half a million. I have no idea what the numbers are. Nobody knows how many people are living in tents right now. This was in, this is, this girl was living, uh, I took this six, um, uh, six months afterwards. She's living in a tent in, in the town that was the epicenter, which is about 20 miles from Port-au-Prince. And then, and this is, you know, people, some people just knew right away. They started making their little shacks. This is, imagine living in Central Park. This is the Central Park of Haiti. And this is another place. I was gonna say. I know. Okay, so here, here we have. This is one of the and this was. Uh, these people invited me. They said they had, they hadn't seen any media people, and they were having this funeral. And this was the first formal funeral that went to the national cemetery. So it was her brother that was in the um, in his house when it. When it that's what this is. This is the funeral. And these are kids. I don't even know, think it needs any explanation. That was a broken water main. And this is in a camp. Oh yeah, the stickers. See, that's so the, something that's you don't know what it is. No, no, no. That's what that. That's that, that Haitian metaphor. Right? They keep falling off. Mm. <laughs> Just like living in a tent. No Let's follow her. <laughs> well, no, I, everyone's going. So this is what I was doing in here. Yeah, what was I doing there? I was visiting a, a, a peasant cooperative in the center of the country, and these two photos are from. There. You're sleeping. And then the delegation, uh, it was a five-day delegation, and we went to Port-au-Prince afterwards. And we were in Port-au-Prince for three hours. And then there was an earthquake. So you have to be ready all the time. <laughs> and you want to know why these two are in color? Because uh, this woman here, you have to make note of her name. Her name is Sonia Pierre, and she's a human rights activist. She lives, she's a Haitian origin. This is her mother but they live in the Dominican Republic. And the metaphor is, imagine uh, Mexicans in California. So she works on behalf of Haitians, and she's been recognized by the RFK, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights, and a number of other uh, human rights organizations. She's, she only has a Nobel Peace Prize to win, so we're like, someday that woman will get a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> And, this, and so she was one of the first responders across the border from the Dominican Republic to Haiti. And this is her mother. So that's why they're in color, because they're not in Haiti. And this is a church that is known to a number of Haitians called Sacre Coeur. And then one month after, the, they, they had a three-day uh, thing of prayer. And this is thir um, 30 days after the earthquake, they had a, a sort of like a big prayer service. Questions? How did you print these? How did you get them onto the muzzle? Uh, this is a very complicated issue. Um, these are digital files, and um, there are some labs around that will print on fabric. And so I had to do a lot of research, but I discovered trying to this because Levi's had a workshop in November where people could experiment. And that some of these were done during the, the, these, the color ones, for example, were done during the Levi workshop on Worcester Street. 
so that's when I came Levi up. as in Levi jeans? Yeah, they thought Really? That, yeah, they thought instead of instead of marketing Levi's per se, they would make this photo workshop available for two months of, of which I learned about it the last week. Mm -hmm. Um and with all kinds of photo studios, printing and all kinds of other wonderful facilities. Fabulous. So that's how I came up with the concept. So what kind of printer prints on that? Brother makes a printer, and I've actually spoken with Brother, and when I had to print some more, I found a guy in the Ozone Park, wherever that is, take the A train, go to Woodhaven Boulevard, or one of those other things, walk four long blocks in the rain, and maybe you'll <laughs> find these people who are willing to work with you, and they were very nice. Um, brother. So actually, so uh, I let my fingers do the walking, and it was very difficult to find after the Levi thing, uh, uh, other facilities that would do what I wanted to, to do. But I did find a place in Ozone Park. You know, get to the New York Times in, within oh, an hour. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> There's a question for you. How did you know that? How did you, how did you know that my pictures were... You said it over there. But not within an hour. I said within three hours, but you're, oh, okay. but you're right. How did I... Well, it happens that I have a friend who was a copy editor at the New York Times. She and I Skype each other. When I was in the countryside, we were Skyping each other. So we were just in touch. But, you know, in the countryside, like, you'd like to be Skyping and then, the, like, forget it. The, the, the connection would drop out. She saw I was on Skype during the earthquake. She Skyped me while I was on the earthquake, uh, while I was on, saying, Something. She just said something. I said, but do you have pictures? Yes. She called the New York Times. She was a, form, a former New York Times person, and she made the connection. So that's a very good question, and it, in other words, it's who you know. What's the follow-up question? Can I have her email address? No, no. <laughs> not like, oh, her, no, she's not with them. She's a lawyer. She's an immigration lawyer now. She's lost all her contacts, but she was still in that in-between she was one of those people that got excess from the New York Times. She took the bio, but she still had contacts there. So, um, yeah, so my, but that was a good question. The question I don't think anybody, maybe I'm the only one to wonder. How much did you get paid? Forget that. I'm not That's a good question. That. Go. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did they give you photo credit for, uh, for, the, for every shot that they used? Who? Oh. The, the Times, Times of course. Yeah, oh, uh -huh. absolutely. Okay. Now, what they also did was they sent it to, they have a stock agency called Redo. Redux, and they put it in their their stock agency, which was sort of basically okay with me because, you know, there was no way that you could market your own work in the middle of an earthquake. Mm. I mean, it was like a major miracle that my stuff got in the New York Times, given that I didn't even have that contact to begin with. Um, so Redu, R-E-D-U-X, ended up, because they're the stock agency of the New York Times, they're the ones who got that picture of like the girl crying in the Le Figaro and all those other things. And it takes three or four months before you get paid and I guess the deal's 50-50 or whatever. I never, I never signed, you're supposed to sign stuff with them. How do you sign something? You're in the middle of an earthquake. You didn't even sign anything. So it was mostly like, it was all just based on like trust and stuff like that. There were also other people who were trying to get in touch with me to work with them. But I didn't have a smartphone. I wanted to Skype people. They don't do Skype. So you're supposed to have a smartphone when you end up in Haiti so you can like call, make international calls. I mean, you want that all set up before you leave the country. That's all I can say. You don't plan an that an you're going to be in the middle get of an event. Say what? Get an agent. Well, you know, an agent, right. You could be my agent. Well, see, like, right, exactly. Well, then get a base in New York. Or wherever you're going well, from. You know, like, okay, the next time I go to Haiti, it's like, if I'm, if it, look, if I go and I say, look, if there's an earthquake, will you take care of my work for me? Yeah. Okay, okay, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got, I got myself an agent. But, you know, you don't plan, like. We saw history being made. People say, did you plan on, you know, you were there during, you mean you didn't plan on it? It's like, how do you plan on being in the middle of an earthquake? You don't plan on it, let alone plan on surviving an earthquake. Right, mm -hmm. but to kill at the same time. You're there, and you're prepared. There's serendipity, the things with it. And serendipity happens to right. those who Right, well, so you're going to be my agent the next time I go. And so we're going to, like, line that all up before I leave on my next trip. All right. Thank you, Tequila. Thank you. I'm looking forward to, like, this YouTube thing. <laughs>